Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Splunk.conf19. Brought to you by Splunk. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage from Las Vegas for Splunk.conf 2019. It's the 10th anniversary of their end user conference. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is our seventh year covering Splunk. Riding the wave of big data. Day three of our three days, we're winding down our show. Our great to have on this next guest, Nitin Meduk, Executive Director, BI, Business Intelligence and Advanced Data Analytics at Clemson University. Big ACC football team, everyone knows that. Great stadium. Great to have you on. Thanks for spending the time to come by on yep. our day three coverage. Yep, thanks John for having me over. So, you know, hospitals, campuses, um, some use cases just encapsulate the digital opportunities and challenges, um, but you guys are, I have that kind of same thing going on. Um, you got students, you got people who work there, you got IOT or a campus, you got campuses. You guys are living the, um, the real life example of physical digital coming together. T tell us about what's going on in your world at Clemson. What's your job there? What's your current situation? So, uh, like you mentioned, we have a lot of students. So, Clemson's about 20,000 undergraduate students and 5,000 graduate students. Uh, we have faculty and staff, so you're talking about a lot of people. Uh, every semester, we have uh, new new devices coming in. We have to support the entire network infrastructure, uh, our student information systems, uh, and, and research computing. So, uh, we, we are focused on how can we make students' lives better, uh, their experience better, uh, um, uh, and how can we facilitate uh, education uh, for them? So uh, we we try to, um, in, in my role specifically, I'm responsible for the advanced data analytics, uh, the data that we're uh, we're collecting from our systems. How can we how can we use that uh, and get more insights uh, for better uh, decision making? Uh, so that's that's. Is the scope uh, university wide, or is it specifically targeted for certain areas? So it is university wide. So we have. We have some key projects going on university-wide. Uh, we have a project uh, for student success. Uh, there's a project for space utilization and how, how, how we can utilize space on campus more efficiently. And then we're looking at energy, uh, energy usage across buildings, campus. Um, emergency management um, area. So, so we've got a couple of projects, and then uh, there are some projects that that most higher ed, most universities work on as far as retention, enrollment, graduation rates, um, how how the academics are. So, so we're, we're doing yeah. the same thing. What's interesting is is that you know the new tagline for uh, Splunk is data to everything. You got a lot of things there, right? You got Absolutely. you got data, a lot of horizontal use cases. So. It seems to me that you have a view, and we were kind of talking on camera before we went live here, was data is a fluid situation. It's not like a, just a subsystem. It's got to be every, native everywhere uh, in an organization. Um, and it, touched every, it touches everything. How do you guys look at the data? Because you want to harness the data, because the data you're getting, gathering on, say, energy or spatialization might be great data to look at endpoint protection, for instance. I don't know, I'm making it up, but um, data needs to be workable across uh, areas. How do you view that? What's the what's the state of the art thinking around data everywhere? So the, the 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 key thing is we've got so many IOTs, we've got so many sensors, we've got so many servers. Uh, it's 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 hard when you work with different technologies to sort of integrate all of them, uh, and in the industry, there have been some uh, uh, some software companies that try to view themselves as being the king, uh, but really the, the, the way to address it is, uh, you look at each system, you look at how you can integrate all of that all of that data without being the king. So you, you basically analyze the data uh, from different systems, uh, you, you figure out a way to get it into a, a, a place where you can analyze it, uh, and then make, uh, decisions based on that. Uh, so, so that's essentially uh, what, what we've been focused on, um, working on. Talk about Splunk's role in all this is because, you know, one of the things that we've been doing, I've been following Splunk for a long time. Been very fascinated with law, how they take log files and, you know, make, make um, value out of that. And their vision now as it grew, as grow is, they're enabling a lot of value of the data, which I love. I think it's a mission that's notable, relevant, and certainly going to help a lot of use cases. Um, but their success has been about just dumping data into Splunk, right, and, just, and then getting value out of it. How does that translate into this kind of 
data space that you're looking at? Because does it work across all areas? What, should, what specifically are you guys doing with Splunk? Can you talk about the use case? So, so we're looking at it as a platform. Like how can we provide a, a, a self-service platform to, to our analysts who can, who can go into the system, analyze the data. Uh, we're, not, we're not focusing on a specific technology. So our platform is built up of multiple technologies. We have Tableau for visual analytics. Uh, we, we're also using Splunk. We also have a data warehouse. Uh, we've got a lot of databases. Uh, we have a Kafka infrastructure. Um, so how can we integrate all of these tools and, and give, uh, give the choice to the people to, to, to use a tool? Uh, the place where we really see Splunk helping us, uh, originally in our journey when we started, uh, our network team used Splunk for getting log data from switches. Um, so it started off as a troubleshooting exercise if a switch went down, yeah. you know, what was wrong with it. Uh, eventually we, we pulled in all of our server logs, uh, that's where security got interested, uh, apart from the traditional IT ops monitoring, uh, security saw value in the data. Uh, and, and then we, we thought about the, the whole ecosystem that, that Splunk provides, it gives you a way to bring in data with, with role-based access control, so you can have data in a read-only state that you can't change when it's in the system, um, and then give access to people to a specific set of data. So, so that's, that's really game-changing, uh, even for us, like having, Having people be comfortable to opening data to, to analysts for, so that they can uh, make better decisions, um, that's, that's the key. Uh, with, with a lot of product announcements made during .conf, I think the exciting thing is uh, it's not just the data that you index in Splunk anymore, uh, especially with the integration with, uh, with the Hadoop and S3. Uh, you don't have to bring in your data into Splunk. So even if you have your data sitting in S3, um, or, or your Hadoop cluster, uh, yeah. you can just use the data fabric search and, and, and search across all your data sets. And from what I hear, um, there are going to be more integrations that are going to be added yeah. uh, to the tool, so. That's awesome, well that's a good, good use case shows that they're thinking about it. I got to ask you about uh, Clemson um, to get into some of the things that you guys do. Uh, in knowing Clemson, you guys have a lot of new things you do. Your university, you're building stuff. You're you got people, you know, doing research. Mm -hmm. So you guys are bringing on new stuff to the network, um, a lot of new technology. Is there security concerns in, in terms of that? How do you guys handle that? Because you want to encourage innovation, for students and faculty. At the same time, you want to kind of have the data to make sure you get the security without giving away the security um, secrets or uh, things that you do. How do you look at the data when you got an environment that encourages? people to put more stuff on the network, to generate more data, because devices generate data, projects create more data. How do you view that? How do you guys handle that? So, our mission and our goal is not to disrupt the, the, the student experience. Uh, so we want to make it seamless, and, and, and you, you, as we as we get uh, influx of students every semester, we have we, we have challenges that that traditional corporate uh, sector doesn't have. If we think about our wireless infrastructure, we're talking about uh, 20 25,000 students on campus. They're moving around uh, when 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 they move from one class to another. They're switching between different access points. So having a robust infrastructure. Um, are, how, how, can we, how can we use the data uh, to, to be more proactive and, and build an infrastructure that's more stable? Uh, it also helps us plan for maintenances uh, so we don't disrupt students. So looking at, at, at key usage patterns, uh, how, what times are, are, are colleges more active, uh, when are submissions happening, when, when are, are, are IT computing services being accessed more, and then finding out a time which is going to be less disruptive uh, to the students. Uh, so that's, that's how yeah. we, we view What's it. What's been the biggest learnings or challenges that you've overcome or opportunities that you see um, with data at Clemson, what's the what's the exciting areas and or things that you've you guys have you know tripped over on or whatever have learned from? What, uh, share some experiences of what's going on there for you. So I I, I think sky is the limit here. Uh, yeah. Really, like there is so much data and 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 so less people in the industry. It's hard to analyze all of the data and make sense of it. Uh, and it's not just the people who are doing the analysis. You also need uh, people who understand the data. 
Uh, so the data, the data stewards, the data trustees, um, you, you need you need buy-in from them. Uh, they are the ones who understand what data uh, looks like, how how it should be structured, um, how 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 it can be provided for additional an analysis. Uh, so that's that's the key thing. Uh, What's the coolest thing you're working on right now? So I'm specifically working on, on uh, analyzing data from our learning management system, Canvas. Uh, so so we're, we're getting uh, data uh, in, in, in form of snapshots that we're trying to analyze. Uh, we're using multiple technologies for that. Uh, Splunk is one of them. Uh, but we're loading the data, looking at, um, at, at key trends, how are colleges uh, interacting, engaging with our LMS, how can we drive more adoption, uh, how can we encourage uh, certain colleges and departments uh, to, to uh, sort of move to a digital classroom uh, content delivery experience. Are this LMS part of the curriculum, or is it more of an online portion, or is it integrated into the physical curriculum? So it's, at, at this time, it's more uh, online, uh, but but we're trying to we're trying to engage uh, more yeah. classes and more uh, faculty members to to use the LMS to deliver content. Uh, so uh, so right now online, soon to be integrated in. Yeah, you know, I was talking with Don on our team from uh, uh, the Cube and, and some of the Splunk people this week. You look at this event. This is a physical event. You get physical campuses. Digitizing everything is kind of a nirvana. It's kind of a, a aspiration. It's not. People aren't really doing it 100%, but people are envisioning that the physical and digital worlds are coming together. If that happens, and it's going to happen at some point, it's a data problem or data opportunity. Data is everything, right? So, how's your, what's your vision of that as a as a professional or someone in the industry and someone dealing with data at Clemson? Because if you can digitize everything, then you can instrument everything. If you can instrument everything, you can start creating efficiencies and, and uh, innovations. Yeah, so the way, I think you, you, you structured it very accurately. Uh, it's the uh, amalgam of the physical world and the digital world. Uh, as, the, as, the, as the world is moving towards using more, uh, more of smartphones and digital devices, uh, how, how can we improve the experience by, by analyzing the data uh, and, and sort of be behind the scenes without even having the user notice what's going on? Uh, it's really the experience, uh, if, if the first experience uh, isn't good that, that the user has, uh, they're not going to be inclined to continue using the service that we offer. What's your view on security now? Splunk obviously has been talking about security for a long time. I think about five years ago, we started to see on the radar data is driving a lot of the cybersecurity now, as everyone knows that. You guys have a lot of endpoints. Security's always a concern. How do you guys view the security uh, picture with data? How do you guys talk about that internally? How do you guys implement data? Without giving any secrets, you don't have to. So, it, yeah. so we, we do have a, a very good cybersecurity operation center that's run by students, um, and, and uh, they do a tremendous job at uh, protecting our environment. Uh, we. Um, we monitor a lot of activity that goes on. Um, uh, higher ed is a is a uh, is a challenge because uh, we have. Uh um, in, in the corporate industry, you can you can have a set of devices. Um, in the in the in the higher education world, we have students coming in every semester. They're bringing in new endpoint devices. Uh, it, it poses some unique set of challenges. Uh, knowing uh, what devices are getting on the yeah. network, um, if 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 there's phishing campaigns going on, yeah. how how can we how can we protect that environment and detect those sort of things? Nit, it's great to have you on. First well, I love to have folks from Clemson on. It's great, great university. Um, got a great environment, great, great conversation. Uh, congratulations on all your success there. Um, final question for you. Share some stories around some mischief that students do, because yeah, students are students. You know, they're going to get on the network. And most students now, unlike when when I was in school, when we were learning, they're all love coding. They're all throwing who knows kitty scripts out there, hosting blockchain, mining algorithms. Um, they're going to cause some curiosity. Is going to cause potentially some issues. Um, can you share some funny or uh, interesting sto student stories of you caught them in the dorm room, put a server in there, running a web farm? Um, is there any kind of cool experiences you can share that uh, might be interesting to folks that students have done that have been kind of funny, mischievous, but innovative? 
So without going into much <laughs> detail, uh, I'll, 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 I'll just say, uh, like most universities, we have we have students and computer science programs and um, and and people who are programmers and and so, uh, sort of per, trying to pursue the security uh, route in the industry. Uh, so they. Um, we also have a lot of research going on the network, uh, and sometimes uh, a research going on uh, may affect uh, our, yeah. our infrastructure and environment. So we, we try to uh, account, account for those yeah. use cases and uh, and silo uh, specific use cases into uh, into a dedicated network. So they hit the honeypot a lot, huh? So <laughs> they're freshmen. They get they'll go right to the. I'm only kidding, of course. Yes. So. Um, we, we we do we do try to protect our environment uh, yeah. and, and and make student experience better. I know you don't want to give any secrets, Nitin. Thanks for coming on. Uh, always fun to talk tech with, with you guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, Cube coverage. I'm Sean Furrier here. Day three of Splunk.com. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break. Stop.